Good morning, bird brains. Out on the battle dunk today. Got Mrs. Bird on the back. We are headed out to New Brownsville, Texas. Uh, go out to the uh, Simpson Motorcycle Helmets uh, Auto and Bike Show or something like that. But first, Blackfist. some helmets. I just need one that fits my Gucci purse. So I'm gonna take a look, see if I can find anything I like. So what actually gets made here? So what it gets made here is uh, drag parachutes, seat belts, some accessory stuff like driver underwear, uh, driver... Um, all flame mechs. retardant stuff? Yeah, yeah all okay. the mech stuff that they wear under their driving suit. Um, then, like I said, we do some seat belts. We still do some helmet uh, manufacturing here. Some of the racing oh, really? helmets are still manufactured okay. here. Then we do some Hans assembly. So we own Hans also, which is a head and neck restraint that the drivers wear. Gotcha, yeah. 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 So that's what you're seeing here. It's set up with parachutes as an assembly line this way. Then we do the accessory assembly line this way. Then we do some belts. And then helmet uh, area where they put together helmets is over in that corner. And then our Hans is right here. Oh, okay. So what sport runs the Hans mostly? So that would be NASCAR, IndyCar, uh, you know, funny car. A lot of American stuff? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, only American stuff. So, Formula One guys wear. Oh, okay, uh, we're big uh, Formula One fans. That's yeah, why I asked. So yeah. Rally, rally uh, guys wear the head and neck train. Everybody. A lot of FIA. Yeah. A lot of FIA. Yeah. So our stuff's not only certified to SFI, but it's certified to FIA as well. Um, but yeah, if you're running any racing uh, where you stand the chance of hitting a, an object that's uh, going to stop you quickly, yeah, you need to be wearing a head and neck restraint. Yep. Just to. I know I've seen guys pull those off when they. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've done studies, you know, there's universities that have done studies that say, you know, even a 30 mile an hour impact uh, yeah. can disconnect your skull from your Ooh. spine. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, it all depends on how, how it hits. Are. Yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Um, but that's, the Hans, the Hans was around a long time before all the basal skull fracture injuries yeah. popped up and it just took time wow. for people to adapt to it. So. I watched a, a YouTube video a while back saying how uh, Dale Earnhardt's crash provided more like science data to help prevent deaths like that than any other crash in history because it, it, 
Yeah, it did. But what what a lot of people don't know is that the Hans device was already made and created. It's just it was literally one of those things where drivers wouldn't accept it. It was yeah. an extra accessory that they didn't want to wear. It's typical, like you know, your old school old NASCAR school racers. guy. <laughs> he wants the open face helmet. I'm not going to wear a full face helmet. You know, full face helmets are for wussies. They, you know, you don't need that. And and so nobody liked it. It was uncomfortable. And the larger models in the beginning were cumbersome and heavy. And yeah. You know, as time went on, obviously, you know, you find new materials to make this stuff out of, and um, everything gets better. Yeah, science. Yeah, science. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of the kind of the same thing with hockey too. I mean, you would never see a guy wearing any sort of face shield, much less a helmet. Well, the goalies didn't wear face masks for a long time until the dude who had the scars painted on his. Yeah. Then Then you had that guy with his, you know, throat get cut open and all that kind of stuff. (laughs) And mouthpiece. Who needs that? I can spit my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I even see a lot of football players still not wearing mouthpieces. I'm yeah. like, guys, God, you're gonna yeah. chop your tongue off. So most everything else is just storage. You know, unfortunately, uh, just because of the way of the world, it's you know things get produced overseas. And, yeah. You know, that's competition is uh, thriving. But I take you guys back behind here. I would ask that you wouldn't film back here. That's okay. Yeah, so the only uh, Mod Bandit they had in the, the Blims was actually uh, her size. So Alicia is now rocking a Simpson Mod Bandit. What do you think, Ms. Bird? She said after she tried it on that she felt like Cinderella had finally found her glass slipper. What are you, what are you, what are you doing there? You realize this isn't on, right? It's, it, I'll do it later. I want to get a quick release for it. Okay. Oof. So right now we are headed over to Buttermilk Cafe (laughs) to have lunch with Team Bradley. And then maybe we'll head back out into the Texas Hill Country for a little bit more riding. It is starting to warm up a little bit. We're 83 right now. Still pretty nice, but I think by the time we get out of lunch, we're going to be into the mid-90s. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was good. All right, you ready to head home? Yes, please. I need nap time. Nap times. All right, hit the outro. Okay, bye. That's not how the outro goes. I forget. Oh, well, it's because you never watch my videos. Oh my god. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Hold on, one more. You're messing it all up. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs>